Hi, welcome back to another web development video where I show you how to use uh, different techniques uh, to create modern websites using HTML and CSS and a little bit of JavaScript. Um, today I wanted to do something kind of fun. This is just an idea that I had in my head uh, really over the last couple of days and just wanted to get it out there. So what we're going to do is we're, we're going to recreate a meme with uh, CSS Grid. So this will show us a couple more things that we can do uh, with CSS Grid, including like layering text over images, um, and how to manipulate the different parts of the grid. So what we're going to have is is we're going to have you know a meme has a, a initial line and then it has a final line, and then in between there's usually an image. Sometimes the image is in between the text, and sometimes the image is the full. Uh, box with the text overlaid over it. That's the most common that I've seen, but I'm going to show you how to do that inside of a website so you can create your own meme uh, on the web page and it's not a graphic, uh, it's an actual part of the web page. So, uh, why you would want to do this, I have no idea, but I just wanted to have an opportunity to show you a little bit more about CSS Grid and what CSS Grid can do as far as as far as layout is concerned. So first we're going to start with our grid. Uh, again I'm using Pug. Um, Pug is like SAS for HTML so when you look at it and it's compiled down you see there's just regular CSS once it gets compiled. Um, and it has it's a deal with the class of grid. So uh, if you've ever used Emmet it's similar to Emmet but not the same. Uh, so in order to uh, put something inside of this grid container, um, we just indent using the tab key. And then the first thing we're going to have, we're going to have a header, and we're going to have a footer. And then in the middle we're going to have some section. So let's just give these names. Um, header, we're just going to call this center, it's not going to have anything in it. And this one is going to be called footer. Um, and then we do want to put something in here and one of my, uh, I don't know if it's a favorite, but it's one that I found and it says Friday and we'll copy that and then the bottom says it's kind of a big deal and we're going to use um, Ron Burgundy, the Will Ferrell's character in Anchorman we're going to use him for the background image. Uh, so he's going to be there saying Friday. It's kind of a big deal. And I already have that uh, image down here. So we'll put that in in just a moment. Essentially, this is your, uh, this is your grid um, HTML code. So you can see there's going to be a header here. And then there's going to be a footer. And then in between, there's a section called center. And then we will uh, space those out accordingly. I have um, just kind of initially set up that there's uh, no padding or margin or anything on the uh, the body. Uh, code pin does this, so you have to just clear it out. All right, the first thing I want to do is set up the grid, and then I'll go back and set up the text and stuff later. So the grid, we're going to say display grid, and we're going to say grid template columns. Um, we're just going to go ahead and declare the columns to be one FR, uh, which stands for one fraction unit, uh, which stands for, you know, it's going to take up the full amount of the page. So it's just going to be one column, and we're actually going to explicitly set our rows. So grid template rows. Uh, what we want is we want these to automatically flow. So if uh, if we get this situation where it needs to come down to another line, uh, we don't want to explicitly declare the size of these particular um, elements of these rows. So it's going to be row one, and then I said there's a section here that's row two, and then this is row three. I don't want to declare uh, an actual size or a height on these because what will happen is it'll break out of its height. Uh, it won't flow and you know recreate that uh, to be the right size so what we want to do is we'll just say auto for the first one and then we'll say auto for the third row 
and then in between we'll just say something like uh, 50 viewport height so that that means that this section here center is going to always have 50 um, essentially 50 percent but 50 percent of the viewport height so whatever that is um, it'll look different on a, a tablet it'll look different on uh, a phone when you change the orientation it'll re uh, it'll repaint that so um, that'll look good and then we're also going to set a maximum width on this of 700 pixels and the margin is auto and that will just that'll center everything you'll be able to see the box here if I if I just put a color on it so you can see that we have our box here and it's gonna um, it's gonna be responsive there's no no bar here so this is shrinking up uh, until it gets to 700 pixels and then it'll just kind of stay a box in the middle of the screen which is what we want um, what I don't want to do is have that to be uh, background red what I want to do is I want to put our image in there so we say background image the URL is equal to this URL this is a copyright in, or a copywritten image so it's protected by copyright I'm just using it to show you what's possible um, please do not use this image on any sort of production website or anything where you're gonna make money and then what I need to do is say position center and I'm gonna say size cover and so that should get us uh, a nice responsive background image so you can see that we keep it centered uh, which is what we want we want his face centered here even if we go down to a phone size um, and then we're going to uh, I like to just put repeat no repeat it's not totally necessary on this one but it's just good habit to get into if you don't want your background images to repeat and uh, I'm not sure that we need anything else on that right now so let's start moving to the text okay so both of these are just h1 uh, tags for the text and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, first the color needs to be white and then I'm going to do text transform to uppercase this is usually uh, memes are done in uppercase Let's get rid of that and I'm going to center align it so we text align to the center and I'm gonna say like font size not 34 but 4 rim uh, which should give us a nice big uh, size and I'm going to do the margin of 0 on those uh, so that takes away the margin on the top and the bottom of the text that's what was making it so big um, and then I'm going to Oh, uh, we have our 50 viewport height here. Let's just go ahead and uh, give it the right font family. So I'm going to use impact. And sans serif if you don't have impact, which most people do. I'm going to take the bold off of it. So we make that font weight of 400, which is normal. It, it makes it not bold. And then um, we're almost there. The last thing we need to do is add a little bit of a an outer shadow to this. Um, on this one, it's it's easy to see, but if you had a lighter colored photo, uh, it would be harder to see that uh, white text. So you want to to pull it off the page a little bit by using the text shadow. And text shadow is different than box shadow. Box shadow will put the put it all around the box of the element. Text shadow actually separates it out into putting a shadow on the text itself on each individual letter so that's been a really uh, huge upgrade for CSS3 uh, to be able to put drop shadows on our text and not have to make those images uh, which is a big deal because now you know 
it makes our text both responsive and it also makes our text you know selectable uh, so we're just going to say zero pixels and then for the spread we'll just say one pixel and we'll just use black so you could see it changed a little bit uh, if you watch Friday you can see it changed just a little bit not much but if I if I make this 10 you'll be able to see that it darkens up behind it quite a bit you can see here that there's a text shadow and if I get rid of it that shadow goes away so you can see it a lot more uh, if I make it bigger and if you like this you know go with it uh, I think that one is sufficient um, you still get oh sorry you still get a text shadow behind and around the edges of it you can see it's a little bit uh, a little bit darker around the edges and then it just kind of sets it off that's essentially what you want is to set it off um, there is a way to do it an outline for this as well so I'm just kind of doing the quick and dirty way uh, we could also do some letter spacing sorry and if we just spread them out a little bit that makes it a little bit easier to see that uh, text shadow around the outside of it let's just set this back to one and then uh, yeah I think this is uh, this is it so we have our um, we have a responsive meme that you can use and put onto a website <coughs> um, you know the sky's the limit you can create your own memes or uh, do whatever you wanted to do if you wanted to make this perfectly centered then you would say uh, display flex and then you could justify content center and align items to the center and then <coughs> you can make this 100 viewport height and then that should give you a perfectly centered meme that stays in the middle all the time or you could decide you know once you get out to here uh, then you want to center it so you could say at media and min <coughs> min width of 700 pixels um, let's do this right then body it's gonna take on display flex so once you get out here then it centers it and then on a phone it still shows it at the top so um, let's do maybe a little bit of a padding here okay there we go so that just pulls it away from the edges a little bit all right, so this is a this is a meme with Ron Burgundy Friday. It's kind of a big deal. Ron Burgundy is a big deal. And um, if you have any questions or you have any thoughts or any ways that we could uh, improve this, uh, let me just well you can leave them in the comments. I'll finish that. But let me just show you uh, very quickly the anatomy of this grid. Um, if you ever want to check out a grid, I think that multiple browsers have this. I know Firefox and um, Firefox and Chrome have it. You can actually check out the anatomy of the grid by clicking uh, Inspect or doing uh, on a PC. It's Control Shift I, or you can go up here and you can do More Tools and then Developer Tools and it pulls up your developer tools here so when we look at our grid our grid is showing here so when I hover over it uh, you can see the outline the outline of the um, the different parts of our grid so you can see that uh, the background image for uh, the entire grid is the Ron Burgundy picture and then you can see that the top is says Friday and then there's our 50 viewport height uh, section that separates them and then there's the bottom uh, section that says it's kind of a big deal so uh, you can actually check out the anatomy of the grid
just by rolling over and you can see here that uh, whenever I hover over this section all of the grid sections are still uh, they have the dashed line around them um, so that's kind of a nice little uh, it's a nice little way to break down a grid and you can see what the grid is doing and how it's being constructed also you can see those things over here right you can see what we did with our rows and with our columns uh, you can see what happens if we take this away uh, it didn't need to be explicitly um, given obviously because when we undo it you know the grid doesn't break but I do like to explicitly give the columns that way it just makes it a little bit easier if you want to transition the columns uh, later on okay so this is our meme and our meme creator and you could just take that and, and you could put any image in there and uh, you could use any meme text so hopefully this was uh, interesting to you and that you learned a little bit more about CSS grid uh, if you want to see more CSS grid videos or if you don't really know what I'm talking about then you can uh, I have a playlist it's called CSS grid and then you can learn uh, more about what is grid what is possible and then how to manipulate and work with uh, the CSS code you should be able to have most of the uh, common parts of CSS grid by the time you get finished it's maybe four or five videos and then I also have some other uh, example videos so not just this one but some others um, showing you how to build a website with CSS grid and then uh, how to make some common elements and things like that alright well thanks for watching and I'll see you next time